Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ashadu an la ilaha illallah waddahu la sharika la wa ashadu an Muhammad an abduhu wa rasuluhu That is, with Allah's name, merciful benefactor, merciful redeemer, all the praise is due to Almighty God, Allah. I give open and sincere testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, the one alone, and there is none like unto him. And I give open and sincere testimony that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's choice, his blessing upon the Prophet Muhammad, upon his descendants, upon his companions, those who followed the companions, the believers, all of them, Muslims, all of them, all the way back in time and all the way forward in time. For as long as it please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum. Jumah Mubarak to you. We invite you to a dua. Bismillah, O oh Allah, we beg of thee all the good, the good that will accrue at once and that that will accrue later, and the good that we know and that that we do not know. And we seek refuge in thee from the evil that will come at once and that which will come later and the evil that we know and that that we do not know. And we beg of thee paradise and the words and deeds that will bring it nearer. And we seek refuge in thee from hellfire and the words and deeds that will bring it nearer. And we beg of thee the good that Muhammad, thy servant and messenger, beg thee. And we beg thee to make straight and good the end of what thou has decided for us. Amen. Amen. Alhamdulillah, 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 rabbil alameen. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for permitting us, enabling us to be here on this day of Salatul Jumu'ah. It is said of Salatul Jumu'ah that it's the greatest day that ever shone on earth. Friday. So we are eternally grateful to Allah for permitting us to be here on this day. <clears throat> we witness that Almighty God, Allah, He is one, that He is the creator of the heavens and the earth, and that Allah is the creator of everything. He is the first of those creators. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is the best of creators. And we witness that Allah is also the God of humanity, not just the, the, the creation manifested outside of ourselves, 
but he is also the God of humanity, the God of beauty, and he is the God of excellence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from every imperfection. No mistakes in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and no mistake in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered. We thank Allah most high for his mercies to us, being too numerous for us to, to count for the gift of our being. We didn't create ourselves for his creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation can supply all the needs that we can imagine. In fact, we can't imagine something that we need outside of the creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And we thank Allah most high for his mercies, for his prophets and messengers, and for the glorious Quran. It is said of the Quran, that is, it is a book or a message, a revelation whose blessings, they cannot be intercepted. The blessings that are to be derived from the word of Almighty God cannot be intercepted so as to be abandoned and the recipient not get them. And it's said of the Quran that it is a word that comprises what is in all of the other revealed books. It's the conclusion of what was in those books. And of the Quran, it is also said that the Quran will make the followers of it eminent. It is said that the Quran will make the followers of the Quran prominent, outstanding, and high in comparison to others. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also for the lesser lights who provided light on the path of life for us that revived and renewed and restored religion so that we might reach the destiny that Almighty God created us for. I was reflecting just this morning on, on one of our great leaders who passed, Imam Orthodine Muhammad. It was 12 years ago. But it seems like he he right here with us. But it's been 12 years, but it don't seem like he ever left. And I was thinking about what they say of Methuselah. Say he lived 950 years. But we don't accept that he lived 950 years physically. That material probably decayed long before then. <laughs> But that body of knowledge that he represented and disseminated lived 950 years. So we can say that body of knowledge that Imam Warthadine Muhammad disseminated and left with us and shared with the world is still here. And I remember him saying once, he said, we have a forever plan. We have a forever plan. I mean, this plan uh, will never reach uh, it's 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 it, a, a finite conclusion. No, it will continue. It will continue. It will be perpetual. And we thank Allah for our religion, this way of life that He chose for us to complete our lives as human beings in the community with other human beings. <clears throat> we often hear people say. Say Alhamdulillah. Say all the praises due to Allah. All the praises due to Allah. Someone may be thinking, well, why do we have to give all the praise to Allah? This is this is not a statement. Alhamdulillah, this is not a statement saying that we can't give praise to each other, that we can't salute somebody's achievement, that we can't praise uh, an accomplishment that someone makes or encourage a child who's uh, to succeed 
or extend some kind of accolades to a person on performing a good deed. Don't mean that we can't say that. But what it means is this, is when the individual reflects on how they were able to achieve, how they were able to succeed, how they were able to make those accomplishments, then within their own selves, when they reflect on that and recognizing that it didn't come from them, then they say, Alhamdulillah, all the praise, all the glory to Allah. I was reading an article in the Muslim journal that reminded us of how our focus gradually has been taken off of achievement, upliftment, and improvement of the whole society. There was a time when, when, when our emphasis was on wanting to see the youth prepare, to see them achieve, to see them being able to compete. There was a time when we were striving to try to improve the lives of those we thought that were most in need. People were thinking about that. What can I do? Can we initiate this program or that program? Or uplift the spirit of those who were, were in despair. Our focus has been taken off of those noble objectives now and been narrowed down to materialism. This is kind of paraphrasing what the article was reminding us of. Been narrowed down to like money and houses, and cars and jewelry and clothes. Been narrowed down to stuff. What we call, we said dunya, right? The, the world, the, the materialistic world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us in the Quran he said the mutual rivalry for piling up and it has in parentheses the good things of this world. But we're just talking about stuff, right? We're talking about stuff. Allah says the mutual rivalry for piling up. That's all that's revealed in the Quran. Diverts you from the more serious until you visit the grave. Allah is reminding the human being that we can be obsessed by greed for more and more and more. And we can be just striving for increase, whether it's tangible or intangible. We want more confidence, more material good, greater power over our fellow man. I don't have to think Externally, I can think internally. In my attic, my attic is just, it, it, it's, it's got stuff that needs to get out of there. You know, it's, it, it's, it, uh, it, it has become uh, a place of clutter. Too much stuff. The pursuit of a man and going after stuff exclusively just going after material things and goods, it bars man from, from having spiritual insight. Bars a human being from, from being able to recognize the, the power that's behind or above the material. We see the material and material seems like it's the end product. But there's a power behind or above the material. And if man just pursues the material, then he will lose his the ability to have spiritual insight. And with that, society will lose its stability and also lose its chance to have happiness. In the Holy Quran, in Surah 34, Ayat 37, and it reads, "Aubu billahi minash shaitan rajim 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أموالكم ولا أولادكم translated and it is not your wealth nor your children and it goes on to say that bring you near to us in rain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us in this ayat in the Quran say it is not your wealth it's not our wealth nor our children our progeny those who are going to come behind us that bring us nearer and right to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And walikum means wealth and possession, substances, all those material kinds of things that a person has. That some sometimes an individual will think that that makes them nearer to, better than someone else. Remember Pharaoh, Pharaoh, when he was speaking to the, the people of Egypt in order to try to persuade them to, to not accept Moses or Musa as legitimate, Moses asked the, uh, Pharaoh asked the question concerning Moses. He said, where is his gold? See, he don't have no wealth. Where, is, where are his robes? You know, where are his silk garments? These, these ostensible things that, that outward show that a person might have achieved something. Where is his gold? Where is his silk robes? These, these the, this is the, the kind of epitaph that's be, that will be used by a tyrant or an oppressor who wants to convince people the masses of the people to follow them. This ayat advises that wealth and progeny, wealth and children, they don't equate to greatness, but that nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is where there is real greatness. And we know that we can never get near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically. Impossible. It will never happen. No nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically. So this reference is referencing nearness to Allah that he is nearest in being pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah most high reveals in this same ayah how to get true greatness. Say it is, and it is not your wealth nor your children that bring you near to us in rank, but whoever believes and does good. For such is a double reward for what they do, and they are secure in the highest places. Allah the Almighty speaks the truth. So Allah reveals to us how to get to true greatness. He said, but whoever believes and does good. Whoever got faith in Allah, just belief is not, we may believe it believe in the power of government or the power of science or the power of another individual. But this belief is not talking about that kind of belief. This belief, one who believes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who believe in Allah, they trust in Allah, they have faith in Allah, they rely on Allah, they got confidence in the word of Almighty God and they do some good work. They do things that are honest and right and beneficial. So when we want to think about greatness, where are the good works? Where are the right act action? Where the right actions are? Where the honest practices are? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says further in Surah 34, I got 38. And those who strive in opposition to our, in, op, in opposing our messages, they will be brought to the chastisement. So, what is this reminding of us? Of, of? So, no matter how much wealth, 
no matter what the progeny is, those who are going to carry on the family legacy, if one opposes truth, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called the truth, and no the reality, then that one will have to face the consequences for opposing truth. Wealth and greatness, wealth being equated with greatness, crept its way into our uh, educational institutions and, and then it got to be backed up by scientific research. Charles Mary about 25 years ago wrote a book. The book was called The Bell Curve. And in the book The Bell Curve, he had a diagram and the diagram had a low point, then it rose up in kind of an arc and then it went down like a bell, like we might see the form of a bell. And what he uh, promulgated in this was that those individuals who were in the top of this bell, right, who were in the top of the bell, these were the wealthy ones and also the most intelligent ones. And those who were at the lower end of the spectrum of the bell, they were the poor ones and the less intelligent ones. So this is what they were teaching in the institutions. There was maybe a little pushback from it, but we can see by our own interactions that this kind of influence prevails in our society. Sometimes we give license to people just because they got money. Just because the only, the only reason to be able to get a pass is a checkbook. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah 34 and 39, he says, surely, my Lord amplifies forbid provision for whom he pleases of his servants and he straightens it for him. So this is saying that the material, the wealth, the material goods that we have, it's a test on us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you didn't get it by yourself. It's entrusted. You, a person have wealth. It's entrusted to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah says here, he amplifies it, he increases it, or he makes it reduced as he pleases. So these, so the wealth and resources and materials, they are test to us. We'll be asked one day, say, well, what did you do with the wealth I entrusted to you? What, what did you do? Some people gonna have to say, I, 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 I bought some gold toilets. Gold toilets. Somebody said, well, what did you do it to I, I, I had a gold toilet. Uh, somebody gonna say, I, I, I had to have silver. I had a silver car. It was made with silver all the way through and through. All the parts, not made from iron and plastic. It was made from silver. Somebody gonna have to say, this is what I did with the wealth you entrusted to me, Allah. Somebody gonna have to say, I put diamonds in my teeth. Huh? What you do with the wealth you have? No, I mean, what it said is no excuse, right? No excuse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted us with wealth and then we're going to be tested by those acquisitions. I want to be clear, we're not saying as Muslims that acquiring wealth is to be frowned upon. No, we're not saying that. On the contrary, but what we're saying, hard wealth and then not spending it in the cause of truth or to help humanity is not promoted in Islam. 
doa oh Allah guide us forgive us our faults and grant us the blessing of faith and Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rabbil Alameen. In keeping with our guidelines, we want to try and make sure that that we tell our Jummah to about 30 minutes. We say we'll start at 1.15 and we'll be out by 145 so as to kind of uh, minimize the the risk that we have even though we social distancing uh, in this climate that we are in right now <clears throat> in the quran surah <clears throat> 35, ayat 10, and it reads, A'udhu billahi bin shaitan rajim. <clears throat> so whoever desires might, then to Allah belongs the might holy. Holy. So we, the, in the first comments, we talked about wealth. And these comments, we're talking about power, inshallah. So Allah is saying here, if any do seek for glory and power, and the word they use in here who's seeking for that is mankind, you read the Mankana, you read the, the one who wishes or intends power. But this word is used in connection with someone who wishes and intends so that they can have power and dominance and control. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if someone seeks for just mere honor and glory and power, that there is no such thing that they can have apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to him because be, belongs the glory and the power, said, he is in dominion. They said, Jami Un, that's absolute. That means all together. Someone seeking for power and glory and think they're going to have dominance and control over someone else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it very clearly in the Quran. All the glory, all the power belongs to him. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. That there will come a time in, in our existence, if not in this reality, then in the next reality, when all uh, objection, rationale, it's going to be muted. All voices going to be silent. Like right now, if a person wants to oppose the truth, they can, they can say, well, I disagree with you. But there's coming a time in our existence when we won't be able to disagree because there's a time in our life when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he will take away from us every uh, capability, every ability to respond. See, well, death is death. In death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed every ability for a person to respond. Physically, 
they might still be intact. But they have no ability to respond. Just as with wealth, Allah most high says in this ayat environment, to him do a sin the goodly words and the goodly deed. He exalts them. Good words and deeds prosper. They bear fruit and they are exalted by Almighty God. The world might consider them small and insignificant. Oh, he just want to be good. She just want to be good. They just want to do this. Small, not pay any uh, attention to them. Overlook them. Discount them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, he says good words and deeds prosper. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he exhausts them. He holds them in high regard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Walan yaj'ailu ullahu lil kafirin aylal mu'minin sabeel. Walan and never yaj'ailu will make Allah, 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 lil kafir, lil kafirin for the disbelievers aylal over Mukminin, the believers away. So when we take that and put that into the way that we speak, right? So, and never will Allah grant to the belief to the unbelievers a way to triumph over the believers. Never. While then Never will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the unbelievers a way to triumph over the believers. We have to remain steadfast and strong and courageous and committed. Even when it seems like evil is winning, we have to be hopeful. We got to be assured. We have to be convinced that without a doubt, truth and righteousness and goodness is going to prevail over evil and wrongdoing. Do I? Will Allah help us in remembering you, being grateful to you, and worshiping you in the best manner? Amen. We want to just take a moment to to remind us of a few announcements. Alhamdulillah, the masjid is now opening for Juma Salat, but be reminded of the safe practices uh, surrounding COVID-19 when coming. Inshallah, we'll have a virtual ta'aleen uh, this Sunday via Zoom, and information has already come out from the Community Affairs uh, Committee that gives us the link in which to to uh, uh, connect with that uh, Zoom event. In the upcoming Masjid events, the ratification of the Imam going to be the first Sunday in November. The arts in the parking lot that was scheduled for tomorrow has been postponed to next Saturday from 2 to 3, and we can contact Sister Charmaine and the uh, the Community Affairs Committee for uh, additional information. And we thank the continued work of uh, Halal Food Pantry, Al Ma'un, and other committees. Also, there's an event coming up on October 25th, a political and social action voting rights dialogue forum, forum that's being uh, under the auspices of Sisters uh, Tahita Matt Ewan, and she's got a very capable panel of uh, professionals to <coughs> present to us what we think will be invaluable information. So we're looking forward uh, for them. We want to just thank the uh, Community Affairs uh, Committee 
for the great work that it's doing, keeping us on track with uh, much of the activities that are going on in the masjid. And as a final note, uh, we were informed that Muslim Journal is sponsoring a launch program, L-A-U-N-C-H program, that is tied uh, to the a time to be grateful benefit. And uh, Muslim Journal is trying to raise about $30,000 because we know that the time to be grateful for this year will probably not happen, more than likely will not happen because of COVID-19. So be on the lookout for notifications of how we can join in, give support to that, and also support the Muslim Journal. He comments a lot. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Hayya lan sola, hayya lan sola, hayya lan sala, hayya lan sala. Fadatamat al-sala, fadatamat al-sala. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. I'll make our intentions for two rakaah salatul jamaah, try to hold our concentration as if this were the last time we can make salatul jamaah for Allah most high. And even though we are social distancing and making this salat, we make our intention as if we shoulder the shoulder and heal the doer in our spirit. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Amin. 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 Allahu Akbar.